All right, so I'm sure that there's been a lot of people out there that have this problem and it's a peeling part of your car. And uh, we're gonna go over this here today and show you guys what causes this, some of the reasoning for this. We've got our gauge here, we're gonna check the paint, but this is a really bad case of it. Cause you guys can see that this one's coming off in big, big pieces, which makes it easier for me to be able to fix this. But it means that this thing, if it was to go through like a car wash, it could explode. So on this job, we're doing the hood, but this is a common problem out there nowadays with a lot of the OEM manufacturers having issues with the peeling. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and show you how I handle it. If you do have something like this on your car, go to your nearest dealer and have them check it out and see if it's something that they want to warranty. So on this one here, we're gonna go ahead and get it stripped down. So I usually would start to sand this, but the first thing I do is check and see how well it is adhered so that I know how easy this is gonna come off and I hit it with a blade. So we'll show you that real quick and then we'll go ahead and get this thing stripped down. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is talk a little bit on why this can happen. So if you do not have a good bond in the factory, because they don't sand their paint jobs at the factory, they put on a product with their sealers that adheres right to the factory e-coat. So either they had a problem at the factory with their factory e-coat adhering to the sealer, or they didn't have enough clear coat on this. So if you do not have enough mills of clear, that sun will heat up that panel so much that it'll actually start to delam the sealer from the actual e-coat because there's no protection anymore and it gets too hot and then you'll have a delam in your paint. So it's hard for us to see in this one whether or not we have enough clear because I can't just read the clear on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and test it here now with the mill gauge. And this one's running at about 4.7 mils. So that could be enough, but we really don't know if that is in the sealer and the base, and then we're not having enough mills in our clear coat. So let's go ahead and see now what we would do to get this thing stripped down. Like I said, sometimes you get easy ones, sometimes you get hard ones. And sometimes you'll see where this one may actually bond in certain spots. All right, so we're gonna just grab our blade. Now, this is the first thing I do, just to see how easy it's gonna come off. A lot of times you can hit it with a blow gun, but that really makes a mess. So this one here is definitely one that is coming off very easy, and uh, that's a good sign. This is a factory paint job, so we're not gonna have to worry about seeing any type of repairs on this because if you were to strip a car that had been repaired at a prior shop there's liable that it could have had some body work done maybe some primer or some filler in certain areas and that area is going to bond really good so because they would have ground that out whenever you grind something out and you do a repair that means that you're going to have better adhesion so a lot of times if you're doing some of the stripping on some of the vehicles that have been repaired before and aren't a factory finish, you will have areas that you're gonna get into that might have some repair done. And that area is definitely gonna be sticking a lot better. So this one here is a factory finish. This is a 2021 vehicle. So it's kind of terrible to have a newer car and have this type of problem. But like I said, you have to take it back and see if they're gonna go ahead and cover it for you. And a lot of times they will. So let's just go ahead and strip this one down and see if we find any areas that are going to be bonded a little bit better than others if not we'll just go ahead and hit this and i'll show you what i have to do to get this thing prepped out for painting all right so we do have a mess here so i want to show you guys that you can use the blow gun but make sure you cover up your eyes because that paint flakes can actually go back in your face make sure even though you're not doing anything with grinders or stuff like that you want to use eye protection in this type of situation so let's see what the blow gun will do we already have a mess on the floor but this is another option as well and then you guys have seen some of the other channels use some of the chemical strippers that also is another method you can do to me i don't really care for that one as much because it's messy and then there's sometimes where you could have some of that residual left over and have some reactions with it so to me, I like to just go ahead and get it removed mechanically. So let's see what the blow gun will do. That way you guys can see another option you do have. 
All right, so you see it's getting messy in here. So I'm gonna go back to my normal uh, way of doing it, which is the razor blade. I'll go ahead and get it stripped off and then we'll prep it out. We'll get it in the booth. We'll paint the hood, we'll put it on the car and we'll get this all delivered in the same day. So let's go ahead and get this thing finished up. And also another thing that works too is a pressure washer. You get the pressure washer on it and it'll blow off a lot of paint as well. So there's different ways of doing it. Figure out what works best for you. This is the technique that I like to do only when it's coming off nice and easy. Otherwise, I would just go ahead and get a sander and buzz this thing off. Also, I was looking at this here and you guys see the spot that looks like it's adhering really well. And they might have just knocked it down and sanded a spot on it with a little bit of a blemish in the factory because they do have stuff like that. So a lot of times it's gonna be hard to really pinpoint what the problem was. Was it the adhesion from the sealer to the e-coat? Was it the lack of clear coat? But we know it's our problem to get it fixed and get it handled and so that it doesn't happen again. So there's recommended procedures that you have to follow and that's what we're gonna do to get this thing fixed and not have this issue happen again. All right, so we got it cleaned up. We've got it stripped down. And you guys see here that we have almost all of the e-coat still on the part. So that's gonna be based off of how we're gonna repair this hood now. So if you did break through and you sanded down the e-coat and you got past it and you have a lot of bare metal showing, you're gonna wanna go back and hit it with your etch wipes that they give you here from Glazerit and then three coats of the urethane primer sand it down and then move into your normal steps for paint. You guys know that we usually use an epoxy here. So if you were to strip this down, you could hit it with your epoxy and then move into the paint like we did before with PPG. With this one here being that we have most and almost all of the e-coat still on this hood because we bladed it off, we're gonna treat this as if it was a brand new hood that we purchased. I talked to Pat, he told me that those are the recommended procedures if you have a lot of bare metal showing, you're gonna to wanna to hit it with your etch wipes and then three coats of urethane, or you're gonna use your epoxy as we used to do in the PPG line. So. What we're gonna do is hit it with our etch wipes. So once you get it clean, they want you to use their etch wipes and that etch wipe has to wet up the metal that it's going on. Make sure that those are actually new, they're not outdated and they're not dried up in that container because they want that metal to stay wet for one minute. That way they know that it has the true etch on it. So these are etched from the factory and then they're dipped in the e-coat. That's why we have a lot of mills on this here part.
So you guys see that we hit it with that etch right. That is what they want you to do when you get a little bit more area than just bare metal edges. So we did it as a precaution to make sure we're gonna have it done right. Make sure you let it flash for five minutes before you go ahead and tack it and then seal it. That way it's flashed off. And then we went ahead and hit it with our normal sealer. And then we moved into our ground coat for the pearl. This is a three stage color. So with the glazerit, they want you to let that first coat of the color for the ground coat set up fully before you hit it with your pearl and that will be another one and a half coat application you guys see there we did it with a spray out card even though we shot it with the camera you want to double check and make sure that it's going to be the right color don't just trust it yes we did have a good rating on that match but you always want to check the color because that is going to be the true identification whether that color is going to match or not whether that color tells you it's right that is the true thing that you want to check. Otherwise, once that hood goes on that car, it might not match and you'll be redoing it. So it's a nice thing to have good materials. That's what I like about this company so far with Crash Champions. You guys know that we have a premium paint line. I got all the support from them as well as Glazerit so far from this transition. So, but I got to tell you guys that it's been great ever since the change. And we have a lot of positive things to come here in the future with this company. So let's go ahead, let that set up and we'll hit this one with the Pearl. All right, so I think that that job came out nice as far as the color match and the way the hood turned out as far as not being dirty. So the last thing we wanna do now is check it with our mill gauge. We wanna turn this off, turn it back on, make sure we're in mills, and then we wanna test it because we know when we started out with this factory OE hood, we had 4.7. And then once we stripped it, we had 1.4 just from the E-code alone. So let's get this thing on. Let's put it in mills 
and let's test it now that we have the glazerite paint all the way from the sealer to the base to the clear let's see what we end up with and you guys see it right there 6.34 is what we ended up with so we have more than the original factory finish and glazerit as well as most of the good top of the line paints want you to have at least two to three mils just of clear coat alone so that's why they went to the modern day paints so that they have a clear coat on top of the color to give it the protection on the vehicle that way your paint job is going to last a lot more because if you just had a single stage or if you just had an enamel or anything like a lacquer from back in the day you don't have that clear coat which is giving you the protection that they want from today's modern paints. It's not only just painting the hood and making it look nice, you wanna make sure that you follow the recommendations from the manufacturer of the vehicle as well as the paint company. That way everybody's happy, you're gonna have a guaranteed repair on this vehicle. You wanna use a quality shop that uses premium products like we do here at this shop. So I hope you guys got something out of it. This is a great tool to pick up if you're ever doing this type of work or you just want to test out your paint and see how much is on it in case you're going to just polish it up and give it a nice buff this will help you from burning it as well as putting the right amount of paint on your vehicle once it's finished up so i hope you guys got something out of this video make sure you follow the procedures and we'll see you guys on the next one